Dan, we're here in Tucson, 20th anniversary of the conference. Where you expected science to add more and more credibility, at least the opinions I see have diverged from that. Am I seeing the phenomena correctly? Well, you're seeing the phenomena that are on exhibit here at the Tucson conference, for sure. This is a very inclusive tent. <laughs> it's a zoo. And a lot of people, it turns out, this is their life, is thinking about consciousness, and they tend to elevate it and inflate it into something that's so supercalifragilisticexpialidocious <laughs> that science just is stands slack-jawed in awe of it. Well, I think that's preposterous. So one of my roles is to be a deflator and say, come on, come on. The phenomena are not, they're, they're fantastic, but they're not that fantastic. We're working on very good theories of consciousness uh, that don't consider consciousness to be the ultimate uh, distinction in the whole universe, which I think is, is a bit of, of anthropocentric hubris, if ever there was one. <laughs> what I see is a, a struggle by smart, dedicated people who are not satisfied with a, 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 a neuronal level, biological yeah, level yeah. of consciousness. It would be foolish for me to just give the back of my hand to them and say that they can't possibly be right. They could. I just think they're under-motivated. What motivates them is a, a sort of moral anxiety with what they see as the, as the poverty of a straightforward, conservative, scientific theory of consciousness. They don't want that to be the case. Why don't they want that to be the case? Because <laughs> yeah, they're, that they're afraid the that if, if it's the case, then life has no meaning or morality will <laughs> disappear. Something. I think that's a poverty of imagination on their part. I mean, I, I find that more and more of my time is spent trying to show people that the account of free will and love and dignity and emotion that you get from the conservative, scientific, materialistic approach is plenty rich. It's, it's predictive, it's explanatory, and people say, but then we're just meat machines. We're the most fantastic meat machines you can imagine. You have an impoverished view of the possibility of meat machines.